Welcome back to what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker and author of the book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. Do you want to know what it's really like to be an entrepreneur? Well, you came to the right place. Whether you're already an entrepreneur or looking to start your journey tomorrow or someone who just needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. This is the place where you'll learn exactly what it's like in the world of entrepreneurship and hear real life, authentic stories of entrepreneurs grinding on each episode. My goal for this podcast is to help you realize that giving up is never an option. If you missed last week's episode, be sure to download it after you tune in today. Before I introduce my guest, I'll share another entrepreneurial story to inspire you all. This story is on Natalie McNeil. She talks about how one car ride in the Czech Republic changed her entire life. She was traveling across Europe in her early 20s and was motivated by what she calls two powerful truths. One truth is that she wanted to explore the world as much as she can as a pilgrim, not a tourist, because she wanted to uncover all the hidden, beautiful truths of the world. The second is that she wanted to be an entrepreneur. She thought maybe a speaker, a teacher, or maybe an astronaut. She was so motivated and determined, but still struggled with one thing that a lot of us entrepreneurs do, doubt. She says a lot of that was all doubt in her head, and she moved past it. But that resonated with me because sometimes I have doubt in the things that I'm doing, but I believe in myself, so I'll do it anyway. She had many accomplishments, and she stayed strong. She won an Emmy for her 2010 doc, Out My Window, and appeared on Forbes' 100 web, top 100 websites for entrepreneurs for her website, which is called shetakestheworld.com. She's a true entrepreneur because she wanted to get away from the norm and see the world. Lauren, have you, did you like her story? Uh, I personally loved her story because I can relate on the self-doubt piece uh, a lot. So... Yeah, the voice you guys just heard is the sound of my guest. My guest on this show today is someone I met while a student at the University of Tampa. I'm fortunate to have so many friends who embarked on their entrepreneurial journeys because it allows me to deliver so many unique stories to you all, the listeners. Lauren has an awesome story to share, and she founded her own company. I'd like to introduce my friend, Lauren Bees. Lauren, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Can you please share your story a little bit and then what you're working on today after? Sure. Um, so my kind of entrepreneurial journey, I pretty much had no choice but to just change my entire life around. I was just on this really unhealthy path of I was overworking in my corporate job at the time, undersleeping, um, overeating, over like just everything that I was just on the fast track to pretty much nowhere. <laughs> um, so I kind of just had to pick myself up. I remember I made a plan to leave my corporate job. And I, from there, I just kind of just went after it. I had another job offer. And I also had applied to Duke Integrative Medicine, um, which was a whole nother approach to the medical field. And you know, I had these two choices and I picked the one that scared the crap out of me, <laughs> um, which now I'm so thankful for because that's what my business is built out of and things like that. But at the time, I remember I was like, I've never turned down a job in my life before. Like, who turns <laughs> down a job? Like, you're crazy. And yeah, I, I picked Duke and that's what my business is now built out of, all the things I learned while I was there. Um, and then I kind of fused that with you know, being a yoga teacher for seven years and what I was really passionate about. So I found this way to fuse what my passion, but then also something that I knew um, was either going to help people in some type of sense or just like kind of the business side of it. Um, so that's awesome. I'm glad you spread your wings and you embarked on your journey. I'm excited for our listeners to hear all about your journey. So now it's time for the big five, Lauren. Each week, my guest and I go over these five questions to help everybody listening in to learn what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. <laughs> we touched on this a little bit just now, but when did you really realize that you weren't happy with what you were doing and that you needed a change? Could you just get into a little more detail for everybody listening in? Sure. Um, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, I was working corporate jobs in downtown Boston for about five, six years. Um, and it was a great run. I loved it. I wouldn't change it for the world. That's where I ended up making kind of a lot of my mistakes, uh, were at other people's businesses, not mine, <laughs> um, which sure. sounds terrible, but, um, and so from there, I just kind of had this moment where I got really sick for a while too. And I was in and out of doctor's appointments and they couldn't figure out what was going on with me. 
And a lot of it was deriving from stress. And again, like I just kind of had no choice. I had to figure out some other path, some other way to live or else I was just going down this path of just being completely unhealthy, not living my most authentic lifestyle. And Mm. yeah, I mean, I'd love for most people to kind of figure that out. Like my advice would be like, figure it out before you don't have a choice and before <laughs> you're in, before you're in a position that I was in. Um, Cause I was kind of forced to change, but um, yeah, kind of looking back, I'm like, I wish I would have done this, you know, three, four years ago, how much further along my business would be now. I can't even imagine, but um, it all worked out the way it was meant to. And so. That sounds exciting. I mean, you're on your way. I think of it too, when my last corporate position, I was drinking coffee like water because I was under so much stress the whole day and the deadlines and things. I'm literally drinking coffee like water and then I'm not sleeping at night because I'm all riled up from the coffee. So entrepreneurship is a different type of stress, but at least it's your own stress. Yes, exactly. And you know, I've had people even make kind of the comment, oh, well, you wouldn't get it. You're not in a nine to five anymore or, you know, like little things like that. And I'm like, well, yeah, and you wouldn't, you know, and it's not about that type of person who's not supportive, but yeah, it's like, yeah. well, you know, you also don't see when I'm up on a Saturday night fixing things on my website or, you know, when I get up and go to work on a Sunday morning, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, again, you're making your own schedule, but you're also like, I work 10 times more now than I did at my corporate job. Um, it's a common misconception with entrepreneurship. Yeah. There's no wrong way. And this comes up almost every episode because some people are meant for the nine to five grind and that's how they're built in their custom. There's no right or wrong way. Some yeah, exactly. people are okay with working 80 hours instead of 40 hours because we're embarking on our own passion and our dream and we're kind of unraveling this from the ground. It's just very different lifestyles. I work, you know, 2 a.m. every day till whenever weekends are they're no different. It's just I want to build my brand and I know how much work it takes. So it is exciting. What would you say one of the two or the most difficult parts of this being an entrepreneur are now that you've been on this entrepreneurial journey, what are the two most difficult things for you? Oh, that's a really good question. There's um, tons. There's a ton. Yeah, I would say sometimes I, there's this kind of misconception that it's this glamorous lifestyle and that you're up every morning at 5 a.m. going on like, you know, a 5K and, <laughs> you know, you're just like this fit machine of a human. Um, and I'd say actually a lot of times it can get sometimes, you know, a little lonely too. I went from being surrounded by people all day, every day. Um, and you know, this path can get very isolating, I think. Absolutely. Um, so that would definitely be one of them that I, now I'm kind of over that I've gotten, I'm kind of like, all right, I'm connected with other people and, um, that kind of thing. But at first it's, if you can push through that loneliness at first, like you're going to make it then, you know, like there's nothing that's going to stop you. If you can push through those initial first couple months, I feel like. Um, <clears throat> and then the other thing would be just, yeah, like you mentioned earlier with the story that you said would be getting over your self doubt and just motivating yourself. Um, you know, uh, traditionally, I was always very motivated by, you know, having a career where I get paid consistently and a career where, you know, you do really well on a project and you get a promotion, that kind of thing. Sometimes when you're an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur, those levels get, you know, like you don't necessarily have a clear cut plan and you don't have like, OK, well, if I do this, then like I'm at this next level. Like you have to wake up every day and say, you know, I, you have to create those levels for yourself. And if you don't, then it's really hard to stay motivated and, um, you know, kind of shut down that self doubt. Uh, well, that- yeah, yeah, it always evolves. My business model is constantly changing and I'm constantly adapting to new ideas. There's always new plans to building your brand and growing and networking every day it takes how much hours in the social media, everything you're doing, you have to do it all as the entrepreneur, there's no marketing department, no payroll department, no advertising department. It's me, 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 what I am prioritizing is very hard for me. I mean, it's difficult, but you get better at it. What you need to do first, second, third, what can wait? Because you have to do it all. But what is one of your greatest failures, Lauren? And what did it teach you? 
Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've had a lot of what I would call like micro failures. Um, and these small things that if I had let them could have totally completely derailed me. Um, but again, they were in hindsight now 2020, they were very small, but um, you know, again, spending money on things that didn't bring profit into my business, um, or, you know, maybe trusting the wrong people, things like that. Any of these like micro failures I'd say that I had came out of, you know, not being in a mindset to make good decisions and that kind of thing. So, uh, and then, yeah, I'd say that's pretty much it. I mean, my only other failures would be, yeah, there. I, I have a bunch, <laughs> so it's hard to. It's there hard are, to less, there are lessons that. learned at the end of the day, yeah. but it, it's nice to look back. I like the way you put that micro failures. Now, as the business is evolving for me, it's taking steps. There's less interest in spending money on something that's not going to benefit my business or my future because you want it to grow and all these things. If I spend money on something else, it takes away from my goal at the end of the day. So you're definitely dead on with that, spot on. If you could choose to have a conversation with any entrepreneur, dead or alive, who are you picking? What are you talking about? Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, so someone that I had been following since I first got my little Instagram account, um, her name is Rachel Brayton, um, and her handle is at Yoga Girl. And she is someone she started, I think, maybe five of her own companies. Some of them she doesn't even own anymore. She's had people like, you know, work with her and things like that. But she is someone I used to hide her first book in my desk at my corporate job. <laughs> and like whenever no one was looking, I take out the book and like read a few pages and then put it back in my desk. Uh, but she everything that she's created and the way she's been able to balance family life. And she's had a lot of things happen on her uh, path as well that could have set her back or kept her from being an entrepreneur. And she has used them to her, not necessarily advantage, but she's used them as more momentum to keep her dream going and fueling what she's doing. And um, she's just a really interesting person. And she's also come across a lot of criticism at some points too. And I think the way she's handled it has just been, you know, it's super inspiring. Um, so if anyone has a chance to check her out or read her book, she's phenomenal. So what'd you say her handle was again for everybody listening in? Yeah, it's just um, at uh, yoga underscore girl. So just yoga girl. Perfect. Everybody <laughs> but, go check that out after the episode. Lauren, where do you see yourself in this entrepreneurial endeavor in the future? Let's do one year and then five years. One year from today, 2021, pretty much since we're filming now by the holidays. What do you want to see? Wow. Um, I definitely want to bring my business to more people, uh, kind of expand the reach, expand the mission. Um, part of my mission is to be able to bring free yoga, health and wellness events to the public. Um, so I'd really like to expand on that part of my business and be able to bring more events to more people, get more people interested in their own health and wellness. Uh, and making the best decisions they can to live their longest, healthiest lifestyle. Uh, and then five years from now, jeez, oh, I'm not, I'm one of those people, I feel like the best part about my business isn't necessarily how many followers I have or expanding my reach or that kind of thing. It's, you know, when I'm done teaching a class <clears throat> and someone, you know, you say namaste and people get up and after you teach a class, people will look up and they'll look at you and they'll say, I really needed that today. Thank you. That's or awesome. they will say some type of affirmation and they'll just say, thank you. Or I really needed that today. Or, you know, I'm going to sleep so well tonight or just some type of positive, you know, reinforcement. And I would like to expand my reach in that sense. Uh, and maybe you know, have global retreats and things like that. So people can just feel like, you know, I really needed this retreat now, or I really needed, you know, whatever you're providing. Um, so that's the ultimate end goal. And to expand in that sense and have that go from, you know, the four five, six, seven, you know, 10 people who come to my studio now have that, you know, be within the thousands or, 
you know, however, however it can grow and just help more people. So that's awesome. And definitely very exciting. Thanks so much, Lauren, for coming on. I know everybody listening and will see the value in your very unique story. I really enjoyed the micro failure moment. How you, I think a lot of people can relate to that. That's awesome. But it's time for the last word. Is there something you want to share with everybody listening in that we didn't touch on today? Oh, this is a good one too. Uh, sure. <clears throat> so my thing, when I first started this out, I, my thing was, if you're meant to do something, there is absolutely nothing and no one who can stop you. You know, like if this is your, if you feel like you've connected with your true calling or your true entrepreneurial path, like there is nothing, no one that can stop you. And no amount of, you know, something happening in your personal life. I've had, you know, really significant relationships fall apart while I've been on this path. Um, my dog passed away. Um, he was my best. I got him in Tampa. He was my best yeah. little buddy since I was 21 years old. He got me through like the first year of starting my business by just of course, being of course. the only person to hang out with. <laughs> um, but you know, there's nothing that's going to stop you from doing it. So if you go in with that mindset, it'll kind of help calm that self doubt and you'll have a lot less of that. So that would be, yeah, just don't let anything stop you. It's great, great advice. Can you go ahead and share your social media, your website, or ways for our listeners to follow you, use your services? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so my website is goodkarmaintegrativeyoga.com. Uh, and then all my social media handles are on there as well. My Instagram is, again, goodkarmaintegrativeyoga.com. Good at, good, it's all, we've got all this stuff. So many, so many things, at, dot com. Um, and then it's just good karma integrative yoga is the Facebook and the Instagram. So great. Everybody you could also follow the show at your favorite morning podcast and on Twitter at podcasts by Lancey. I'm at Vincent A. Lancey on all social media and YouTube. And my website is Vincent Make sure you check out my book left for dead, a story of redemption, which is on Amazon now and DM me or email me. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed today's episode, please continue listening and rate what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. Five stars. I work very hard to find value delivering stories for you on each episode. As always, I'll end the show with a quote that inspired me, and I know it will for you too. Once we believe in ourselves, we can risk curiosity, wonder, spontaneous delight, or any experience that reveals the human spirit. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all in the next episode of what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. <laughs>